Nope, not gonna happen. Zanoff, come in, Zanoff. What? Zanoff, my God, man, I've been trying to reach you. I'm trapped on a planet and about to do mortal battle with a Gorn. I need your help. You think you can call me whenever you want? I'm working here. There isn't much time. Can you help? Okay, I don't know how you're doing that, but you need to stop it right now. But Larry, the Gorn. Oh, again with the Gorn. We did the Gorn back in season one. Yeah, I know, that's what's been bugging me. We could do it better if we try it again. Oh, well, that's good for you. However, I have some tests that I've already prepped. I want to do some stuff from James Bond. We're doing James Bond. James Bond, James Bond, I love James Bond. You know that. Let's do both. We'll test your Bond stuff and retest the Star Trek thing. Come on, what do you say? Don't tangle the dream, Larry, and yank it away. Fuck. Yes. Really? Yeah, really. Want to beam up. <sighs> On this episode of Hollywood Weapons, we're testing James Bond and some other things. Let's see with the range. We're gonna put Hollywood to the test. This is Hollywood Weapons. This is gonna be great. We're testing James Bond, retesting Star Trek. Hey! Bueno? Get down here. Sorry, this thing keeps falling off. <clears throat> Why are you in a tuxedo? Change of plans. We're testing James Bond and Star Trek. Oh, should I change? Can I be old, Joe? No time, dude. Let's just do the thing. <sighs> and now, it's time for Terry's knucklehead science. You may recall a few seasons ago, we tried to build a bamboo cannon like Kirk did in the episode Arena, but we failed. Some of you wrote with some suggestions, and I think if we do it again, we could make it work. That's the spirit. Next. And from the classic man with a golden gun, Bond arrives on the island of Mr. Scaramanga, played to perfection by Christopher Lee. Nick Knack meets him on the beach with a bottle of champagne, and Scaramanga shoots the champagne cork out of the bottle with a revolver. Can you really do that? And from the movie Thunderball, Sean Connery uses a spear gun to pin a bad guy to a tree. Now, I got another test I've been thinking about, and pretty sure this might be the perfect time to do it. That sounds exciting. Yeah. Hey, I've been practicing the grip thing. Really? All right, give me your best shot. Yeah, no, 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 okay, I need you to move up a little further, just a little bit more, just a little further up, and do just right there, that's part of the Today, testing James Bond along with some other stuff. Come on, Larry, just one glass? Well, I don't drink, Mr. Bond. <laughs> In the scene, you see that gun creeping around the yes. rock, right? Uh, about 20 feet away is the champagne bottle? It's about 20 feet away, and of course, he's got this very ornate, engraved, nickel plated Colt single action, right. 1873, in 45 Colt. Shall we? We shall. All right, so there's kind of there's two pieces to this. The skill, the skill piece is, can you hit the cork standing offhand with that gun? And then the other piece is, is that energy, if you do hit the cork, enough to uncork a bottle of champagne, right? Exactly, and I mean, the problem is, you're not just trying to hit the cork. It, it literally does have to lift the cork up and out of the right. bottle for the bottle to be drinkable, right? I mean, that's the test. I mean, Scaramanga can do it. We'll see if Schaffer can do it with Let's one see. hand. <laughs> so you got five rounds in there. Get a nice good stance and fire when ready. Almost one more. spot. Dang! You got one last shot. I'm right there, man. Oh, look at 
Look how close that is! Look, man, there's really good shooters who could do this. We know that. I just, I could do this all day. Maybe I get it, maybe I won't. So what do you want to do? Uh, I got an idea. Let me rig something up, and we'll give it another shot. OK. Let's see what happens now. You ready? Count me down. Three, two, one. <laughs> I think we hit something. <laughs> Let me make this safe, and we'll go down range and take a peek. Dude, that was great, man. Well, my man, you couldn't have put the bullet in a better spot, so. OK, so clearly, here's the deal. We hit the cork. Right. Went right through nothing but cork, right? Right. But you can still see even the wiring is still intact when it's holding things together. And the part of the cork that's in the neck it's undamaged. It ain't going anywhere. Yeah. So, and in the scene, too, there is the foil is over it, so you know the cork's there and the wire is there. For sure. So you can hit the cork. It's just a matter of marksmanship. But are you going to decork the bottle to where you can actually pour it out? Probably not. I would say no. As cool as Christopher Lee is and yeah. dangerous as Mr. Scott Amongo was, this is a failed test. It ain't going to happen. I think so. OK, so let's do the Star Trek test next, and then we'll do your Bond thing. No, I've already got my Bond thing set up, so we're gonna do my Bond thing, and then we're gonna do your Star Trek thing. Are you done? Yes. Let's go. How did he do that? Okay, man, I got one word for you. Thunderball. Oh. If you're telling me that Claudia Niagara is going to come over the top of that yeah, berm. Yeah, 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 you wish. But you did get the right scene. Okay. Bond and Domino are sitting on their beach towel, and one of Largo's evil henchmen <laughs> tries to sneak up on him. There are so many evil henchmen, are there? OK, yeah. and, well, he ruins his plans because he shoots him with a spear gun and sticks him to a tree. Exactly. And you've done some scuba diving and spear fishing. <laughs> sure So have. you know there are two basic types of spear guns out there. One is pneumatic, which he used in the film. Yeah, right. The other is the rubber band powered. Now, they're a little bit different when you're in the ocean, but we're shooting in air here as the environment, so we're actually using the rubber band type. No problem. OK, why don't you go ahead and get into position? Before I do that, though, shouldn't I go change into my short shorts? I really wish you wouldn't. You're lost. Here's your spear gun. You really couldn't get Claudine. There's uh, Vargas. Stick it to him. He's not stuck to the, he's not stuck. That yeah, didn't go through. Yeah, he's not stuck. I mean, he it's quite a bit of penetration. Three, good penetration about 3 quarters of the way through. Uh, these guns obviously are accurate enough, and that takes quite amount of energy to punch through uh, this gel, but it didn't stick him to the tree like in the movie. I hate to say it, fail test. For sure, and I think the difference probably was the short shorts. Finally, we agree on something, yeah. but you know what? I think he got the point. I think he did. Come on, Captain. I will be the Wrong phone. number. Who's that? Nobody. You ready to test that bamboo cannon? Yeah, I think I got everything in place. How's your confidence? Confidence is my middle name, Zanoff. Really? I thought it was Patrick. It is. Captain's Log, Stardate 2267. We're back on Cestus III and revisiting the episode Terry vs. the Gorn, where we tested Kirk's homemade gunpowder, which was a dud. Can we do better? All right, man, this has been bugging me. Last time we did it didn't work. What did we do wrong? Well, as they say, all the elements were there. They just weren't in the right order. If you recall, when we used real gunpowder, we were actually pretty successful. Yeah, the minute we put the real stuff in, the Gorn didn't stand a chance. Yeah. So what are we going to do differently today? Well, I've precisely measured out all the different elements. You're going to mix them up in that beaker. Then we're going to sift them a little bit with that sieve right there. And that should get us a much better approximation of the real product. Uh, are you saying Kirk is smarter than me? Actually, I'm trying not to say that. Okay. So just let's go ahead and mix this up together. Okay. 
go ahead and sift that. As you can see, also, this time we're using real fake diamonds, just like the prop crew would have provided on the show. I'm worth it. Keep sifting. And behind you, we have a ballistic gel dummy, because if we actually get this to go off, we want to see if we get any kind of actual penetration. I want it all in there. Here's our real fake diamonds. Let's get all of them in there. Nice sound. I kind of like it? that noise. Yeah. Come around here. We'll try to sight this bad boy. Get the tail end there. I and got give us, that. I got that. Make sure that the fuse doesn't shift on us. I think we're good. Let's put eyes and ears on. Okay, so you should be able to kind of reach around and light our fuse. Light it and run, right? Like we normally do. Yeah, you're finally learning. Okay, come back here. It's burning pretty good. Yeah, it's burning good, man. Okay, so it's going pretty good. It's actually singeing the rope that's holding it together. We put the same bracing yep. on it that was in the show. Something's burning. It's not, it's not exploding, though. But it's not exploding. Mm. Oh, dang it. I was really hope. What happened? Well, clearly, this time we actually got the black powder to burn. Right. Last time, our, our homemade black powder didn't burn at, at all. all. Right. The problem is, of course, it just burned. It didn't explode, really. Well, I mean, he's my favorite, and I hate to say it, but this is a failed test. It wouldn't have worked the way Kirk did it. Absolutely failed test the way Kirk did it. All right, Larry, what's all this? Well, if you remember, we did a test in season three where we tried to use an aerosol can as kind of an improvised explosive device. It didn't really work very well. And some of the suggestions were that it was because it was so windy that day. It was windy. And it was very, yeah, very windy. That. So I figured, let's give it another shot just so that it's more of a fair test. Now, in the meantime, I've gone and done some research. And here we have some air freshener, just like in the show. And you can see. Nothing. You're never going to get that to ignite. So we've kind of stepped it up because I, I know by now, season five, that Shepard likes the boom, right? So we're trying to give this the best chance okay. of success that we can. We've gone to road flares instead of candles, and we've picked the most volatile aerosol type can that we can come up with to do this test. Awesome. So shall we get ready? Yeah, man. OK, Dan, why don't you come in and light the flares for us, please? And as you recall, this test was from the TV show Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. What was the, what was the gun again? What were we It's used? the standard S.H.I.E.L.D. issue M&P Smith & Wesson 9mm. That's right. So here's your weapon, your magazine, and fire at will. We're retesting a scene from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and we've decided to up the candle power. So here's your weapon, your magazine, and fire at will. Very cool. So clearly, the ingredients really matter, right? We've proved that it could be successful if you use the right types of materials. Air freshener probably isn't going to do it. But the concept works. The if, concept, you, if you have an accelerant with, with yeah. flame, it's going to go. That was worth doing. Absolutely. That's why we test. We want it to be a fair test. Last time, maybe it wasn't. So we come back and do it again. The Girl in the Spider's Web is a continuation of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo series of books and films. Claire Floyd plays the main character, Lizbeth. In this scene, some bad dudes break into her loft looking for her computer. She hides in her safe room, but they set a trap for her. Putting some black powder on an alarm clock and an open propane canister for the fuel, the device is set. The guys take off, and when the alarm clock rings, it ignites the gunpowder that then ignites the propane, and boom. This is going to work, Larry. 
Well, I, I, I have an opinion about that, but I've actually written it down here on this little note. So why don't we do the test, and then we can compare the notes later. Don't, don't, don't open it. I won't. I'm intrigued. But you definitely have an opinion about this, a don't you? A definite opinion. Shall we? Yeah, we shall. OK, so in the film, of course, the bad guys have an alarm clock. They pour some gunpowder on top of it. They open up some propane, of course, and create an IED. When the alarm goes off, boom. At what time are we going to rig this clock to go off? Yeah, we're really not going to set the alarm and wait around for it. We've kind of set it up so we can rig it by remote. Ah, I hate that noise. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and pour the powder on here. You can retreat to our safety zone, and we'll be ready to go. What about the propane? Well, we have a propane line laid out here. Matt and Steve are going to handle it for us for safety reasons. Don't look at that. Fine. I think I could sneak a little peek at this. Hey, no peeking. Kidding. Kidding. OK, as you can see, even just pouring the powder onto a clock like that was Big difficult. Fun. Yeah. Because it's, you know, it just kind of <laughs> slides it's, it's off It's not made for that. Everything. But so propane we've got flowing. propane flowing. And when we figure, we've built a little bit of the enclosure there just to trap it in. You like, have to. Because it's an it's indoor in house. scene. Right, right. Of course. And here we go. Time to wake up. Uh, nothing's happening. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Go ahead and open up your note. Nothing happens. <laughs> in, in order for this gag to work the way it did in the movie, you need a very, very definite, concentrated source of ignition. And that hammer on the alarm clock just, just won't do it. But Chap likes the boom. Can you make it work? Well, of course I can make it work, if that's what you want. Did I ever tell you, you are the greatest armor in the history of television and movies? <sighs> Fine, let me go rig it. All right, Larry, what do we got? OK, well, first of all, in the movie, the scene, of course, was indoors. Yeah. Right? We're in an open field here with some wind, so we've created some more containment there. That's number one. Secondly, the biggest problem was, of course, the source of ignition. So we've created a much more concentrated source of ignition. We have a plasma lighter connected yep. to the alarm clock. So overall, I think we have a better chance of success at this. All right. OK, you ready to try it? Yeah, man, let's do it. Really? Best in the history of television and film? 100%. Let's give it a shot. OK, we're going to get the propane flowing. And we're going to arm our mechanism here. And we're going to count down. Count with me. Three, Three two, two, one, one go. go. Hey, I'll take that. Okay, that's that's more what it's supposed to look like. Right. But clearly it's a movie. You know, the, these guys coming in doing that with those ingredients, it's not an ideal form of IED for sure. Well, I, you know, watching the film, and it was a great movie, I was thinking to myself, why are these elite killers doing it this way? I, I know, right? It's so a movie. It, it seemed like a good idea at the time. It is doable, but not exactly the way it was in the film. It was a great day of test. Thank you. So you're saying I can go home now? Yeah, I mean, it's not like anybody's keeping you here. Well, there you have it. Something old, something new, something James Bond, and something blue. I'd like to thank Larry and the team for making it fun and safe. As always, what did we learn today? Popping a champagne bottle with a bullet was a no-go. A harpoon is deadly, but won't pin a guy to a tree. The Gorn wins again. Shooting a flammable aerosol can surrounded by flares is the only way to get a boom. And using black powder on an alarm clock is a dud without a good ignition source. 
So if you're watching a TV show or movie and you think to yourself, can you really do that? Reach out to us. Maybe we'll make that happen. Larry, phone call.